Have you ever been discouraged? I mean really discouraged. I don't mean that you've just had a setback or two. I mean when things have come at you so hard and so fast and for so long that you are completely overwhelmed and you feel paralyzed and neutralized and you're so exasperated, all you can do is throw your hands up and say, oh, the universe is against me. I've always had a desire, a deep internal desire to write, to put down in words what I think, what I feel, what I've experienced, what I understand, to pass on to others these thoughts and these experiences to share with other people what I have learned. My big opportunity came when I was invited to write an article for a national youth magazine. I was so excited. I got down to it. I poured my heart and my soul into it. I thought about what I wanted to say, how I wanted to say it, what impact I wanted to make. I chose the words carefully, crafted the phrases carefully, polished it up, and then finally it was ready. I sent it off and it was published. I was so excited. I expected some kind of feedback, some kind of response, so I waited. And I waited. And I waited. No response at all. It was as if I hadn't written a single word. So I began to wonder if this whole writing thing was for me after all. But then one day the feedback came in the form of Pete. Pete is one of the editors of this magazine and we were together at a youth camp on the Isle of Wight. Now, Pete is a man who dresses 20 years younger than his age. He wears his cap backwards, teenage t-shirt and sneakers with the shoelaces hanging out. Pete also has a kind of nasal way of talking. He kind of talks down his nose and, uh, and when he talks to you, he kind of tilts his head backwards and peers down his nose as if he's looking through bifocal glasses, but he isn't wearing any. So Pete sidles up to me. A small group gathers around us. Pete looks around at them and then turns to me and says, Oh, your article. Dreadful, dreadful article. The worst article we've ever published. I wonder why we even published it in the first place. I feel stunned, devastated. I feel shocked. I feel embarrassed. I feel ashamed, ashamed in front of my friends. I just wish the ground under me would open up and swallow me right up. But now fast forward to another meeting. This was a meeting of Christian leaders. We were discussing some very important things and I took part in the discussions, passionate about these subjects, maybe a bit too passionate, if you know what I mean. The discussion is over and Uncle Tom, one of the moderators, is standing by as if he's waiting to see me. Uncle Tom is a big man with an imposing presence, slightly bushy eyebrows, but with a kind and friendly face. Still, I was expecting the worst. I thought Uncle Tom would say, young man, you need to listen more before you speak. You need to learn more before you participate. But no, Uncle Tom turns to me and smiles and says, have you considered writing? I think you could have a talent for it. Wow, just a few words, but that was enough. He saw something in me and he encouraged it the power of encouragement. Now, more than 40 years later, and more than 40 books to my name, I think Uncle Tom was right. What stories do you have about discouragement and encouragement? Do you remember how paralyzing it is to feel very discouraged and how releasing it is when someone encourages you? When you realize how much discouragement there is in the world, perhaps in your own home, your family, your place of work, your college, your school, and even your church. Don't you just long to know how to move from discouragement to encouragement in your own life? And also, don't you long to know how to pass that encouragement on to other people? 
Today, I'm going to help you start your journey to become a great encourager, beginning with what to say and what not to say to someone who is deeply discouraged. The good news is that encouragement is both a science and an art. You can master it. You can learn it. You can become a great encourager. You can learn how to encourage yourself and also how to encourage others. So let's begin. Today, I'm also inviting you to participate in a special one hour live masterclass on encouragement. Some of you may be ready to sign up right away. You don't even have to watch to the end of this video. Just click on the link below and register right now. You are probably no stranger to discouragement yourself, but you will certainly know others around you who need encouragement. So in this masterclass, I will help you begin your journey to become a great encourager. I will share with you some of my most valuable insights into encouragement. Normally, this one hour live masterclass would cost you £180. But for the next seven days, I'm offering it to you absolutely free of charge. And in addition, I am going to give you my free ebook. The Friendship Factor, because friends need to encourage one another. Simply choose the best date and time that's available for you and click on that link and register right now. You can do it right now. You can register now. Remember, this offer will last for only seven days. So act now. Register right now. My name is Colin Dye. And I have been a Christian leader and inspirational speaker for almost 50 years. I have traveled to 44 different nations as a teacher, trainer and equipper in both large events and small. I've written over 40 books translated into 10 different languages, but all of them with the purpose of training and equipping people in their Christian life and ministry. I put all of this experience together in my online training programs, including this one, The Power of Encouragement. So let's begin with the teaching. Encouragement, where do we begin? I think a good place to begin is by asking ourselves what we should do and what we should not do. Let's begin with what we should not do. The first thing, that we should not do if we're wanting to encourage somebody is we do not minimize. Don't minimize what the person is saying. You can minimize by saying something like, oh, well, that's not so bad. I had it like that. I've had it far worse. Other people had it far worse. Don't minimize. Don't undercut that person. Let them explain themselves, even if they, you actually do feel that their problems aren't that serious. It's serious to them, so don't minimize. Secondly, do not analyze. At this stage, nobody wants you to analyze. They don't want you to become an analyst. They don't want you to sort of dissect their situation or diagnose them. Don't analyze at this point. Just listen. So, for example, analyzing would be saying, mm, oh, yes, I, your, your problem is such and such. Yes, yes, I know what's going on here. Don't. Just listen. And you need to come to some affirmation. We'll do that in a moment. So don't minimize. Don't analyze. And at this stage, also don't advise. Right now, at this stage, don't advise. You know, some people don't even let you get your words out and they're telling you what you ought to do. They have the best advice as if we as Christians need to come up with the answer straight away and, and that's what people really want. Sometimes people don't want you to give them the answers, certainly not immediately. They want you to listen. So don't advise. It cuts off the flow of speech. It cuts off the flow of empathy. And above all, don't minimize, don't analyze, don't advise, and certainly do not moralize. This is almost the worst thing you can do when you start judging and moralizing and saying, oh, you've really got yourself in a dreadful mess. How could you possibly have done that? How could you possibly let that happen? You have really failed here. You are adding more pain to their existing pain. Now, all these things here don't do because they close people up. It's about shutting them down, not opening them up. So if this is what you are not to do, what then are you to do? First of all, 
what's so important is to learn to listen. I mean, really listen, deeply listen to the people. And you can encourage them to talk more by letting them know that you are listening, by saying such things as, that's very interesting to me. Can you expand on that? Can you tell me more about this? And you're indicating that you're interested and you want to hear more. Now, once you've listened for a bit, then you can show to them that you are empathizing. So do listen and do empathize. Empathy is, is like entering into an understanding of what that person is thinking and feeling. And you can show that by saying something like, do you know, listening to you, I can really see, I can really feel how difficult it has been for you. I don't know fully what you're going through, but I can really see that you're having a tough time. That's empathy. Now, after listening, empathizing, you need to learn to affirm, to affirm them. Now, by affirmation, I don't just mean giving them some flattering thing or saying something that will just make them feel better or try to make them feel better or, you know, some kind of praise, in very superficial. No, when you affirm somebody in an encouragement conversation, you are affirming something particular about them. You are affirming something about their attitude in the situation, their progress, what they have managed to achieve, how they're approaching it. So in other words, you are affirming something about them in the midst of their situation. When you frame it this way, they are really affirmed. So you could say something like this, do you know what? I, I don't know how you've managed to come so far, but you must have done so something right because you are coping much better than you think. All right. And uh, now, finally, you listen, you empathize, you affirm, but also you inspire them. Inspire them. And this is, this is one of the great goals of encouragement, to bring people to the point where they can move forward, break free from their, from their impasse that they're in and begin to be released into hope for the future. And one of the ways of inspiring them is by saying something like, you know, I've been listening to you and I think with a bit of help and encouragement, you got this, you're gonna make it. And now they know that you're not just making this up. You've listened and you've encouraged them and now you're inspired inspiring them. So all of these things, don't minimize, don't analyze, don't advise, don't moralize. That causes people to close up and shut down. But do listen to people, do empathize, do affirm, do inspire, because this causes people to open up and they will continue to listen to you as you move forward in your encouragement conversation. As I said earlier, today I'm also inviting you to my one hour special live masterclass on encouragement. If you've liked what you've heard today, you will like what I have to say in my full course, The Power of Encouragement. And you can register right away by clicking on the link. Now, I don't know if you're going through a deep time of disappointment and discouragement yourself, but I do know that you will be in touch with other people who desperately need the encouragement you can give them. In this live masterclass, I will take you further on your journey to become a great encourager. You will learn how to listen to people. You'll learn how to share with them your thoughts, and your feelings. You will learn how to open up to them and help them open up to you. And you'll develop the knowledge, the attitudes and skills, the know-how to encourage people. Encouragers are the most positive people to be around. They are influencers. They are those who make a difference in other people's lives, who help other people escape from the prison of discouragement and release them to go forward with inspiration and hope into the future. Now, as I said earlier, normally this live masterclass would cost you £180. But for one week and one week only, I will be offering this to you absolutely free of charge. And in addition, I will send you my ebook, The Friendship Factor, absolutely free because friends need to encourage one another. So all you need to do is to click on the link below and sign up right now. You can select from the options available the date and time with 
best suits you. And one of the beautiful things about doing this live online is you don't have to go anywhere. You don't even have to leave your home. You can receive this anywhere you have your laptop ready. And as a result of that, you can focus fully on what this course offers you. So don't delay. Choose the option, the best option for you, the best date, the best time for you. And do it right now. You can click on the link below. Remember, do it right now. And this offer, as I said, only lasts for the next seven days. So don't delay. Click on that link right now and sign up for my live one hour masterclass on encouragement. Thank you and God bless you.